You know, writing and memorizing facts in the classroom is one way to learn, but hands-on exploration can be even more effective. And that's especially true when it comes to science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM. STEM, if you haven't figured it out just yet. How would you like to dive into one of these fields? Well, we have the perfect person to tell us how. With us is Dr. Chad Pavlovic. Pav Pavlikovich. Pavlikovich. <laughs> Thank you. He is a Next Gen STEM Academy educator. Thank you for being with us this sure. afternoon. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. I mean, I should understand with the Slavic <laughs> and with the Eastern European languages of how hard it is to. But to the kids, things. he's Dr. P. Dr. P. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be Dr. P to me. That's perfect. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so for those who are unaware, what is STEM? Well, it's it is. It's just a combination of all those all those really cool uh, topics: science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Um, the way we do it um, is we bring it all together. We kind of mesh it and mold it to where you don't necessarily see those individual components. It's you're doing all these things and you're you're seeing how the real world works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's what um, brings the joy and excitement to uh, the students and kids and adults of all ages. That you know. We are so dependent now on technology. I mean, we're using it here within this studio. You have it right there with your, uh, your iPads. Um, so, you know, we are, we are very fortunate that um, we're living in this age. It's, you know, it's a great time to, to be alive when it comes to technology. I tell the students all the time, you know, hearkening back to days when I was their age, a lot different, you know, <laughs> a little more simpler, but still, you know, it, it's that science, it's that drive. It's that curiosity that all children have. Mm -hmm. I think you know that we need to foster and, and let them continue to develop and grow with that, so you know they could be the future leaders of today and tomorrow. As a teacher, you see these kids and and, and doing the hands-on learning. Why do you think? I mean, I feel like mm -hmm. it, it's a it's a no-brainer, but why do you think hands-on is so much better than just reading? And uh, well, I, I think it's it's the movement, it's the applying what you have read, mm -hmm. maybe what you've written about, maybe what you're thinking. And then actually doing it, you know, we, we love to be um, about moving around in, in the classroom, you know, it's, it's controlled chaos. You know, you walk into, into the class and you might say, this doesn't look like a learning <laughs> environment, but when you really step back and, you know, just take it all in for a moment, um, you'll see that the kids are, are it's, it's like a beehive, it's buzzing. Yeah. And within that controlled chaos, mm -hmm. you, do you think that STEM builds leadership qualities in these kids? I do. Um, I could tell you an example right now. My eighth graders, they're working on a, a capstone project where it's uh, all about exoplanet discovery. And they're working in teams of five. And we have a mission manager who is kind of the, the boss. They're, mm -hmm. they're overseeing the entire mission. Uh, they have a, we have an engineer who is kind of helping out the other divisions with their building and their designs. We have a planetary scientist, a, a geologist, and an atmospheric oceanographic. That's right up your alley. That's right up my alley. Uh, and then, you know, they all have their own special duties mm -hmm. and jobs, but they're all collaborating, working together, as well as working individually. So you're seeing that capacity uh, for this learning and this, this growth in leadership and teamwork and mm -hmm. responsibility and, you know, just all those things at, at such a young age that, you know, it's kind of inspiring to, to see them work at this level and then, you know, from there, go out into the different high schools and then college and career and be successful in whatever they do, whether it's science related or it's not, they're still learning these skills that they're going to need no matter what they do. Absolutely. Okay, so you have an expo coming up. Tell us about it. Yeah, so this will be the third year that we've done this. It's a great mm -hmm. STEM expo. It's open <clears throat> to anybody on the shore. So this is not just a Wicomico thing. This is open to anybody on the shore, students of all ages. It'll be at Salisbury Middle School on Saturday from 9 to 2. We have a lot of community members this year um, attending. We have um, faculty and staff from SU, Warwick, um, UMES. We have the 4-H Club. We have Minds in Motion Children's Museum. We have other uh, volunteers coming. Plus, we have our students actually participating in uh, creating activities for the young, younger kids that come on in to see what they're doing and also just to help foster that love of science. All right. Well... We really love hanging out mm -hmm. with Dr. P, and we certainly aren't done. When we come back, we're going to uh, have some fun. You're looking at some of the tools of the trade when it comes to education in the field of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Not only do these sub subjects lend themselves to hands-on learning, but they help kids set up for a successful career like mine in meteorology. Yeah, and this weekend the public is invited to experience the great STEM 
Expo. <laughs> and we're back with Dr. <laughs> Chad Pavlikovich. He's a next gen STEM Academy educator. And uh, we, we have Susie there. Susie's if back. You, you may remember last year when Chad was on, was, Susie was here, and she, she interrupts us every once in a while, but she's, she's an important part of, of what you teach in your classroom. She is, I mean, the, the idea, I mean, the kids are so fortunate today. We were just talking a little while ago about, you know, growing up and the limited technology we had, even though it was great at the time, and you know, it was the future. You know, what's at their disposal today is just unbelievable. No. Uh, a lot of this up here is augmented reality, mm -hmm. where, you know, we're looking at something like this small little model of Jupiter however you put your phone over it and then it becomes a life within mm -hmm. the palm of your hand and then all this data is coming out about it it's actually animated on your phone and you know you're learning uh, you know more within the first 10 minutes of, of uh, interacting with it than you know reading a, a chapter in a textbook mm -hmm. yeah. so and, you know that's grabbing the kids attention now some of the items you have on here or at least one is 3d printed and you do a lot of that as well right yeah we do we do do a lot of 3d printing um, once again on Saturday we'll have opportunity for students to come in see 3d printers in action but yeah a lot of our um, students do use the 3d printers to make uh, various um, items some of these here are models that we use um, you know this one here of course is space time warped with a star and a wormhole. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have Sasquatch here. We are going to have a cryptid <laughs> little cryptid hunt on Saturday. It'll be a little scavenger hunt. We're going to have some prizes out there for uh, contestants to go around the school and find these cryptids. Um, yes. We have Smilodon here, the uh, saber toothed tiger, and then we have a cephalopod over there. I kind of got a plushie here as well. So, <laughs> you know, we, we, we kind of, you know, go over all, all the uh, different gambits of, of what's available to the kids to use. Because sure. once again, you know, reading out of a textbook and doing written work is, is necessary, but, you know, getting your hands and, and mm -hmm. just getting dirty with right. it is, is really, you know, is what it's all about. Well, you're talking about demonstrations and getting your hands dirty. Which one are you most excited for on Saturday? Well, I mean, all of this is really great, but one of the cool things, um, we do build in eighth grade, for the most part, we do a physics unit, and we build these pinball machines most often. Uh, we're having Mad Pinball, which is a um, small little um, boutique down in Berlin. They've actually lent us a pinball machine oh. to have on display and for um, our guests to interact with. And I'm going to use it as a teaching tool because the physics of pinball is just fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of uh, the younger generation are kind of clueless. <laughs> if it's not a uh, pinball on the iPad, they don't know the silver ball. Right. So I think, you know, getting to see that in action is going to be kind of cool. And it's a uh, it's a really cool themed pinball. It's actually Star Wars. So oh. it's going to be, it's going to be, <laughs> you know, it's going to be awesome. So I, I think uh, when I brought it in on, on Friday, I think the teachers were more excited about the <laughs> pinball machine coming in than some of the students, but I think that'll probably flip-flop here in the next couple days. And we were talking before we came on about the, the age of the students you have. You have middle school students, and you feel like that's really the time to capture them with STEM. Yeah, I mean, you got, you know, the younger kids, I have a I have a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old, and, you know, any any students that are that young, they're natural-born scientists. You know, they're always exploring and, you know, trying to figure things out, and, you know, they're learning the world around them, but once they start to get that concrete idea of, of how the world works, uh, once they get in the middle school, things are starting to become a little more abstract, and so that's when you can really start to play with uh, the ideas that I think you can kind of hook, and it's still mm -hmm. kind of cool. You know, they're, they're not too cool for school yet, yeah. so uh, I think that's where, <clears throat> you know, the sweet spot is. And that's where you can have, for the most part, the most fun, because you can really dig in and get kind of deep and yet still have a good time with it and have fun. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, we do a whole thing on cryptids, and, you know, who's learning about cryptids in middle school? <laughs> I don't know. We are, but, you know, it's one of those things, and real quick, um, when I got hooked, it was, I, and I tell my students this, it was my first, first grade experience. They did dinosaur days, mm. and the art teacher put this life-size stegosaurus paper mache model in the, in the uh, lobby. Every day I walked in, I saw that, I'm like, that's amazing. Mm. And so it's that thing that inspired me that I'm trying to do for these future generations. Sure. So that, that's, that's my goal. Mm. All right, well, remind us again of the STEM event, when and where? So it's Saturday, it's the Great STEM Expo, Saturday at Salisbury Middle School from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Once again, various community players are gonna be taking part, we're gonna have concessions, and it's just a great day to get out with the family, enjoy some science, and learn something new, yeah. and play a little pinball. And play a little Star Wars <laughs> pinball. Yes. 
Oh, all right. Dr. Thank P, you. thank you so much you're for welcome. coming in thank today. You.